Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. We talked to Wolfgang Halbig about a month ago. He's the former state police officer and a school safety expert and one of the top in the nation. And he just says, hands down, Sandy Hook is an inside job. So that is coming up. And then part of the George Galloway interview that was excellent for a member of the parliament from England, from the Respect Party, we're going to round things out with that. And then I will be back, Lord willing, tomorrow live. But first off, uh, here is a report that Leanne McAdoo filed about more of the mysterious deaths of people that speak out about the Illuminati and all sorts of other sickening things uh, that are going on. Truth is truly stranger than fiction. I hope you're having a great Easter. God bless you all. Here is Leanne McAdoo from the front lines of the InfoWar for InfoWars Nightly News. Peaches Geldof, the Paris Hilton of the UK, was found dead at the age of 25 of unexplained and sudden causes. There was no suicide note, no hard drugs on the scene, and autopsy reports so far inconclusive awaiting toxicology reports. But was Peaches Geldof targeted for exposing pedophilia or something more sinister? Last year, Geldof tweeted the names of two crazed groupies who allegedly agreed to let singer Ian Watkins of the group Lost Profits sexually abuse their children. Watkins pled guilty to 13 counts of child sexual assault, including two counts of attempting to rape a baby. Geldof, who is a reformed wild child and mother of two, insisted that these monster moms be named because the press refused. She sent out a tweet revealing the names of the mothers and then promptly deleted it after she was informed that she might be investigated by police for inadvertently identifying the child victims involved, a crime in the UK. But was Peaches ready to reveal more? She's not the first person to die under mysterious circumstances after exposing pedophilia. BBC presenter Jimmy Seville died before he could pay for his crimes as part of an organized elite pedophile ring linked to the UK government, the BBC, and the royal family. A theory following the death of Princess Diana was that she had knowledge of the powerful VIP pedophile ring and was about to blow the lid on what she knew. There's a still unsolved case of BBC investigative journalist Jill Dando, who was shot point blank outside of her home. It's rumored that she may have uncovered the VIP pedophile ring operating within the BBC and was about to expose it. There's also the mysterious death of Georgia State Senator Nancy Schaefer and her husband, immediately dubbed a murder-suicide by the media. Nancy was actively exposing corruption within the Department of Family and Child Services, including actions by the DFCS director in the county where she lived. Specifically in Georgia, former Senator Nancy Schaefer had found during the last few years that DFCS housed children in a foster home with a known pedophile who molested the children. Habersham County failed to remove six children from a home where they are being abused and tortured. And Georgia also turned two girls over to a California father who had a pornographic video business. Schaefer made it clear that organizations procure their underage victims by making children wards of the state, such as convicted pedophile Jerry Sandusky's nonprofit, The Second Mile. But there's another curious twist linking Peaches to occult groups that perform ritualistic child abuse. Peaches was very interested in ghosts and the occult and recently snapped a selfie that she claimed revealed the ghostly hand of a woman who had died in her home. Her death comes about a year after publicly announcing her initiation into the occult secret society Ordo Templi Orientis. On March 11, 2013, Peaches uploaded this photo to Instagram. What's the first rule of Fight Club? You do not talk about Fight Club. Geldof's Instagram snap caused a surge of interest for the secret society. It's based on Aleister Crowley's Thelema, the OTO revolves around the concept of sex magic to attain spiritual illumination. The OTO considers itself to be the true heir of the Knights Templar and the Bavarian Illuminati. Crowley's text also contains several thinly veiled allusions to human ritual sacrifice to attain magical potency. Crowley's motto, do what thou wilt, has even influenced Illuminati puppet Jay-Z, who has repeatedly appropriated Crowley's quotations, including wearing this t-shirt emblazoned with the words. Aleister Crowley, once dubbed the wickedest man in the world, reveled in sadomasochistic sex rituals and the use of hard drugs. 
These are the same fertility rituals and creepy child sacrifice themes we've seen before at the Rothschild masquerade. Geldof defended Crowley on her social media accounts, calling him a beautiful writer and thinker, and posting photos of her bookshelf stacked with volumes of Crowley's work. We may never know if Peaches Geldof was murdered for revealing too much or if she was offered up as a human sacrifice, but either way, she died at a very young age under mysterious circumstances and under the spell of an elite secret society. He could not have a more extensive background tailor-made to investigate what really happened in Sandy Hook, Connecticut, that was used and is being used to try to create a mass guilt to be projected on the American people and make us collective killers of the children that reportedly died there. They bulldozed the site. They've declared national security and state security on all the details. I believe people died there from my research, but clearly... The official story is not true, and there were people given scripts to put out official lines. And we now know that Bloomberg was activated days before saying, prepare the social networks for a mass shooting. So we see a lot of preparation here. This could bring them down, because I've never seen the American people reject something like this. Wolfgang W. Halbig, I'm not going to go over his whole bio, but he was, um, of course, a Florida State Trooper in Miami, Florida, and a United States Custom Inspector. Uh, and, of course, after that, he was uh, the executive director of the National Institute of School and Workplace Safety. Wolfgang Halbig has recently formed a new safety and security company, WK and Associates. Previously, he worked in public education as a teacher, dean, assistant principal, director of alternative school, and the director of school safety and security of the uh, Seminole County Public Schools. Huge area. A public school district of 65,000 students. And, again, he was also, before that, law enforcement experiences as state trooper, and then customs inspector. As a result of his unique background in both law enforcement and education, Mr. Halbig has been invited to provide presentations and keynotes to a variety of audiences. And I'm not going to go over all this, but he advises police across the country. He's very well respected, very well known. It's at the top of his field. He's been threatened, and he's the guy in there. He's the, you know, the, the good cop you're looking for. The real guy, like in V for Vendetta, that's, that, that, that is good and, and, and can't be intimidated. And believe me, he needs to be prayed for, folks, because... We don't, I don't know exactly what went on. I just know as an investigator, a lay investigator, that the official story is not true, so we're being lied to. But Wolfgang, thank you for coming on, Mr. Halbig. Just give us the basics of, 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 of a preview of what you think is really going on here and the cover-up, and then break down what we know when we come back. Well, I think, I think Homeland Security and FEMA has probably pulled off one of the best illusions on all of the American people. I've never seen it. I bet you that they had it in planning for over three years. And, you know, I just have 16 simple questions that I hope that we talk about today. But, Alex, I, they won't respond. They don't return phone calls. They don't respond to FOIA requests. And, you know, until they prove or answer those 16 questions, I don't think children died at Sandy Hook. And I hope we have that great discussion, you know, as we come back. Well, I, I mean, it's starting to lean that direction. It's just the boldness of a total hoax. But we've got green screens. We've got people clearly being actors. We've got, uh, the, I mean, this, man, I tell you, they really are sloppy. I, that's all I can say. Well, somebody needs to win the Oscar because I tell you what, they have split families across this country. We have some family members believing it happened. We have the other half the family members believing, you know, it was a hoax. I mean, they have divided this country. The one thing I've learned about government, being an American government teacher and history teacher, you divide this country and they conquer it. I think the government's trying to conquer this country. And I, that's not the America that I grew up in, Alex. Well, undoubtedly, that is it. The globalists run the government and they are conquering it. And they admit they're involved in divide and conquer. Well, i tell you what, it's time for us as Americans to come together. And this is the greatest opportunity. Sandy Hook, if we can show that this thing was an illusion, the dominoes will fall. And a lot of people need to go to jail, Alex. Now, now briefly, uh, how have you been threatened? Well, you know, it's ironic for over 10 months. I mean, when Sandy Hook unfolded, I went into shock. I'm a national school safety consultant. I'm sitting there and watching television, breaking news. Children shot, teachers shot and killed. I mean, I mean, it took me a week to figure it out. I'm going, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm a FEMA trainer. I teach incident command. I train people how we're supposed to respond. That's not what we're supposed to do. And I can't believe they're telling me that 
that if I don't stop asking questions about the Sandy Hook school shooting, that the Connecticut State Police were going to come down and charge me with felony harassment. Now, all I've done is use the Connecticut Freedom of Information Act. And you know what? That's the first thing we learn as a citizen is you've got to be able to ask questions. And, you know, the questions that we're going to talk about here are so simple. They do not hurt any of the parents. They do not hurt Sure. Describe what happened. Describe what they said to you. Well, they came to me, and first of all, they did what you did. They went over. They had my whole background, my whole history of my life, where I went to high school, where I played football at Abilene Christian College. They knew me about being a state trooper, customs agent. They thanked me for my service to my country. And then they said, you need to stop asking questions, or they're going to come down from Connecticut, and they're going to arrest you. And I said, for what? For asking freedom of information requests? I mean, they need to go to jail for not responding. And then they told me I need to hire an attorney, you know. And I'm sitting there going, I said, well, you guys need to call them up and tell them I'm not going to stop asking questions. That's one of the things I believe in. And you know what? The question, the first one is who? would have directed the New Haven FBI field offices to classify the Sandy Hook school shooting. Alex, that's never heard of. Columbine, Virginia Tech, Jonesboro, Paducah, you name it. The FBI has never, ever classified a school shooting. Why would they do that? And then when I called the uh, New Haven field offices, I wanted to make sure my information was correct. This lady, FBI agent, you know, I asked her, how do I get this information? She says, you're never going to see it in your lifetime. It's been classified, and the public will not see it. And I think everybody who's listening to your show today ought to pick up the phone, call their congressman, their U.S. senator, and demand, and I mean demand a copy of that report. Because we, as Americans, we have a right to know, especially when they're using children and teachers as a ploy to scare the living hell out of us, Alex. And the next question is really simple. I want to know who the incident commander was. I mean, one of the things, Homeland Security and FEMA has shoved down every school district, private and parochial, that when you have a mass casualty event, you have got to have an incident commander. And, and you know what? They won't tell me who was in charge on that day. Now, that tells me a, a, a serious problem because that incident commander was in charge of requesting trauma helicopters. I'm 67 years old. I've never, ever seen a school shooting where we don't get the quickest and the fastest medical help, and there's nothing like the trauma helicopter. They got the best experience, best paramedics. They got the tools that they need. Why would you not order trauma helicopters for those children? <laughs> and for those teachers. We have the videos of them, the same kids going in circles in and out of the building. Unmistaken drill. And then they just tell them they were all shot? I mean, keep going. Well, Alex, I mean, for anyone to understand what you and I today are talking about, I got your listeners need to pretend that they have a child in that school on December 14, 2012. Please, listeners, pretend that you have a first grader, a little girl, a little boy, your love of your life, and they don't order trauma helicopters knowing they may be seriously shot, clinging to life. And then... Why would they not let the paramedics and the EMTs 